Welcome to the Nine Show. This is the land where there is constant chaos. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the N I N E Show or the Nine Show. The Nine Show. The N I N N E Show. <laughs> I got my my shoulders are so just so wide I can't even fit in the screen. <laughs> Actually, yeah, sometimes I really feel like I'm dumber than myself. Technically, it's because you suck. Yep. <laughs> but that we is true. Like, I don't know what to say. Um, <laughs> I like how you're like hitting yourself on the head <laughs> when you're trying to. Yeah, I'm like, think. I'm like, fuck. Like, we literally we think the same. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Nine Show. Today, we're going to be looking at Ni as a function, and uh, we're going to be looking at what it is different types of NI, examples of NI as a savior, as a demon, pros and cons, and, you know, how you can do it better. So, yeah, so today we're going to be starting with Leon, who's going to go through the definition of NI. What is NI, Leon? NI is having, well, having NI means that you have a certainty, you, you have the need for certainty and organization and you respect patterns while disrespecting facts and the reality of things. Yeah. That's awesome. That's, yeah. I what mean, that's the, pretty, so that, that's the, the reality of things. The reality of things like, uh, mm, well, it's, it's more like seeing what something could be rather than what it really is. And and because of that, you, you, uh, if you have NI, you're missing a lot of details you're, or, you know, you get a sign of a kind of grasp of some of the details, but not all of them. And then it kind of uh, ruins the, the vision. So you have to have both in order to have good NI. Yeah. Well said. Yeah, I think that was good. Um, and just to add on to what you were saying, it's... It's, it's essentially trying to find patterns, but that can attend to as many sensory situations as possible. So um, compared to any that just looks at patterns as they emerge, like from the environment, you go somewhere and it's like a pattern related to that thing you see in the moment. And I is kind of molding concepts into one pattern, which is subjective but it's molding it to fit the need of the spectrum of facts. So it's like, I can use this for many situations. Interesting. Um, so it, it's to give the person kind of flexibility in the sensory. So yeah, that's, a, that's like an extra uh, use of NI. But yeah, so we'll go over to Jono, hear what he has to say about NI as well. Cool. So um, NI is an interesting one because I, I, thought, that, I thought that I had NI back when I thought I was an INFJ. Um, turns out I don't have it. So what I thought was NI back then probably was just NE. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so it's saying that I don't really, I don't fully understand NI. I obviously know the, the general term that um, Leon described, but from what I can understand, it's kind of like having NI is very like a framework. Like you said before, like, you can use the NI in many sensory situations. Um, Odom, you said that. It's kind of like you, from, from all the information you've gathered from various sources, data, doesn't matter what it is, um, you can start to create patterns or frameworks which can apply to multiple different scenarios. Um, <clears throat> so for example, you could see the same pattern or framework in multiple different contexts. Like if you're reading a book or if you're watching a movie or playing a video game or something, you're like, I, like you can, you're very good at seeing this same specific concept that may apply from in all of them. <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, I, yeah. I think it's, it's like, obviously it's very conceptual. So you can see concepts well. Um, and I think people that have INI, high NI are good at like seeing a potential pathway or potential um, scenario of how something may play out. So, you know, if they've seen this pattern before, if they've seen, if they're in a situation like, oh my gosh, like, you know, I'm, I can kind of figure out where this is going to head based on the data points that I've got. Like I can connect 
these facts and I'm like, okay, I'm pretty sure it's going to go this way. Um, <clears throat> I see. Did you have something to say about that? Yeah, it, it, it it's, I'm, I'm in pretty much in the same boat as you are as uh, far as understanding uh, and I, and I, I think that my understanding of it is very similar to what you were describing as well. Um, but I did think of it a little differently. Um, and, and I've spent a lot of time with Leon. So I have, a, I think I have some mm. um, examples that I have to share about this. Um, but uh, as far as definitions go, it, it does seem like, um, like what you said, like, you know, it's a framework. And so you notice that a lot. It does. It does seem to me like it is, um, like it's a like a like almost a funnel compared to a net, right? Where it's like it takes all that sensory and then derives something from it, and then if it doesn't fit, well, too bad, you know. It's gonna make it fit depending on uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, other the other parts, um, like um, Leon sent me. Leon is very religious, um, Christian. No, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm very spiritual. I have a relationship with God. There's a strong ahead. definition difference there. <laughs> I will chew you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> not, not, not on the video, man, dude. That's for private. <laughs> <laughs> um, he sent me this video one time about this, this cop. It was, I'm, I don't know whether it was satirical or not, but it was, it was hella funny. Um, this cop was like, I want to get high to, you know, see what it's all about and stuff. And so I got high and it was, it was being, you know, really funny and um, obnoxious, like uh, with what he was saying. Um, he was totally out of it. But at the end, he like, he was like pointing and he went like, um, like, like, like this, you know, like his pinky was out, you know, and uh, Leon, <laughs> Leon uh, sent me a message. It's like, notice how he was making the devil horns at the end to um uh basically and say that he, that that weed was uh making uh the uh, some sort of devil possession easier uh and i thought that that was a very and i think um especially because he sort of does does that in all uh aspects of uh his life so he sees and that same pattern concept in multiple different mm -hmm. things yeah and that's something that um, some other people have uh, said as well. You've said it uh, as well, uh, Jonathan. I think that's sort of like in any perspective of NI where it's like that's how it feels to us. Where like we are kind of going around the place. And whereas it's and then it's so uh, almost unorthodox to see NI so keyed in on uh mm, on one a few individual one, things yeah like three things or like a very narrow amount of things where we're like mm -hmm. yeah it, it it's like because the o is so low that's how we have like that's how you have to um oh oe essentially where it's like does this fit my known information no okay then it goes out almost yeah that makes <clears throat> sense that's yeah great. i think we yeah, I think we've actually like looked at the NI definition in more than just the surface, but we're looking at it in different dimensions, which is really good. Um, so now we're gonna look at how you can tell if someone is NI savior, which we've kind of alluded to it, but we can go into more detail. Um, so Leon, um, do you have anything to say about this? Sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. All right, so I was just gonna say that um, one can tell somebody has NI uh, as a savior uh, if the suspected person with NI consistently disrespects the facts and is confident that uh, they see the pattern behind what's going on, just kind of like what Assis was saying a little <coughs> earlier. Um, they typically have an imaginative mind and can come up with uh, actually, believe it or not, more than one, like many possibilities of things that could happen, but they tend to jump to the conclusion and focus on the one um, if they suspect something is going to be potentially causing chaos. Um, I have like a really s silly example, but um, you know, and I don't know too much about politics, <laughs> at this point, but my example is um, even though in the United States of America, there's a group of people that are supposed to be counting and recounting the votes to elect a president, many NI types 
believe in the possibility that the government is lying to us anyways, and they select a candidate before the votes are actually cast. Uh, the presidential candidates will just kind of put on a show, and uh, the one that wins is actually just taking orders from the Illuminati. <laughs> <laughs> By definition, the Illuminati is a group of elite collective of global influences who work to further the interests of human species as a whole, <clears throat> as taken from Illuminati.org. But the point is the NI uses the SE to gather the info, and then they make decisions based off their hunches. So they get a bit of info and make their best guess at what's likely to be true, even if it isn't surface level and like proven yet. Yeah. That was good. That's, yeah, that was good. That was really good. Um, one thing, just to add on to what you're saying, one thing is interesting. Sometimes when someone is savior and I, they'll, they'll misattribute their NI. They'll overdo it. Or if they're demon NI, they, they, they can misattribute things as well just because they don't use that function enough. So when they use it, it, it it's kind of clumsy, right? Um, so one way of kind of distinguishing from that, which is difficult to distinguish, is I kind of noticed that people with NI tend to prefer learning things through deconstructing it. So deconstruction is a way of understanding something using its most basic um, units. Could you say that deconstructing is similar to like reverse engineering? Yeah, reverse mm. engineering and then only focusing on the most basic components. Right. It's like, it's like um, let's, say, let's say I want to start a YouTube channel. Um, there's many complex, there's many parts of it that you have to fulfill before you have a successful youtube channel but like someone with an eye might be like all right these are the five things i need to focus on even though there's there's many things in between but but um yeah so and i people tend to overuse deconstructing and that's why you always see kind of intjs and stuff blasting like the three things you need <laughs> it's not it's not only because it's easy to communicate and it's it's because that's also how they perceive it because they use their ni they they're giving what they know so it's always through this kind of um deconstruction and who's that I intj who's that intj blaster which is very like <clears throat> you know share always sharing the three things you need to learn to, to Ty make Ty money Ty Lopez. yeah Ty Lopez. steps to whatever <laughs> he's yeah. a perfect example of what you're trying to say but exactly. isn't that also partly te like not just and i alone where he's like oh yeah sure. like i gotta break it down and make it stupid easy for other people even though it's not easy yeah it's see, nt yeah see so the te aspect is is he's he's boiled it down to things he can communicate i do the deconstructing thing but it's very like abstract like not abstract but because it's ti it's 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 really subjective principles and like the they're so i'm always testing my own like assumptions of things so i know i'm doing the deconstructing as well but it's it, like it's not it's not as te it's not as just do this it's more like i have an idea of what what the three things are but they're not clear they're not like te clear so but it's still the same process um all the time i make assumptions i'm like oh shit i didn't consider this to go wrong or like so yeah it's always deconstructing um, okay. but that's, yeah, that's what it is. I think anyways, but, um, yeah, we'll get more, um, perspectives about this. So John, I'm sure you have more, more to yeah, as well. I've got a little bit, but, um, I guess how I would spot an INTJ, um, in my life is I would, um, <laughs> if, if I see someone that's like trying to keep people away or tr try to keep information away, keeping the sensory away, limiting like <clears throat> um, what uh, data they let into their brain. Um, they, they really like to focus on their, their known information um, and therefore can, you know, obviously glance over data, glance over sensory information. <clears throat> um, I, I find them to be gen like they're quite focused in terms of what they want for the future. Um, mm. And they're really good at building things. So, you know, they, if they have a goal or something in mind, um, 
or, you know, our destination they have that they will not achieve in 10 years. They're very good at like kind of piecing together all the blocks needed in order to kind of build towards that goal. Even if it's like 10 years before. Yeah. They know what they have to set up now in order to achieve something in the future. So they're very, really good at building things. <clears throat> yeah. That's why I really appreciate like you and I Dom's in this, in this business that we're running, like with the, the YouTube channels that like you guys are really good at like organizing, like structuring how we get, how we do things, how we build towards like making this um, a thing. So it's a good mm-hmm. thing. It's great. Yeah. It's very admirable. <clears throat> 110% yeah 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 um but yeah i think to really notice like and now yeah, you just have to spend time i mean you have to spend time with someone that's an idom to notice you know all the the <clears throat> nuances and traits they manifest yeah that's true because like everyone can do everything right so you kind of have to you do have to kind of take your time with them just to see where mm-hmm. where they they kind of have biases or like where they prefer to do it like yes. in the end right away so yeah that's very true um yeah we've we've kind of looked into the fight in detail so now we're going to look at how to tell if someone has an eye as a demon and i guess you could say this it's one's just my, over- this one's the fun one but yeah <laughs> but um yeah we're gonna start with leon again just to see what he has to say about this he's actually rejoining i can i can give some things while oh, yeah. he uh is getting his stuff fixed Go so it, <clears throat> um it's like it's sort of it's you know not to just say that it's the opposite of you know how you would spot a, a savior and i but it's very much like are they talking about a lot of physical data and unable to um <coughs> arrive to um that that common point of uh what was that word you used odom um, the construction deconstructing yeah yeah right oh yeah. first principles same yeah. kind of thing. yeah they're not able to abstract it down to what's common <clears throat> even well it's not not it's not like they're incapable of doing it they just they're so focused on a particular type of information that being the literal information that they don't go beyond which uh it does have its purposes because we can't do that shit none of us but <laughs> then it's like you know they get they get caught on um not being uh, almost flexible enough because if you don't under if you don't understand what's going on then you can't you can't adapt to the situation almost yeah and i think i think i think uh you guys know that very well with your feminine and i yeah that's true like exactly what you said at the end it's because like a lot of times if someone's demon and i or demon n they actually have the right information they just don't know how to apply it you sometimes you need that that concept to to make it transferable knowledge yeah mm-hmm. and uh they yeah. have it they they'll be stressed and but like i'm aware they know exactly what they're doing they they have the information there but they just can't transfer it and um mm-hmm. it's, yeah it's that kind of stress of not being able to tony robbins actually said something about that about um trans being able to link one thing with another and you have to be able to do that in order to teach it like to like make it relatable to the, the yeah. audience yeah, yeah cuz he has and i blast right so that's why yeah it makes sense that makes yeah sense. and speaking it's of true. feminine and i versus masculine and i we do have a video so click on the screen somewhere for that video or just yeah more. yeah or just wait one week cuz it'll come out a week yeah. after this <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah what well, yeah. um oh yeah leon did you have anything else to say as well i know you quickly dropped out but now you're back anything to say of um just yeah about demon. people demon and about I, people yeah. demon and I, yeah. oh yeah i got i'm planning to stay because i live with one <laughs> 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 no so um one can tell somebody has demon and i if they consistently show or express lack of understanding and this may or may not be due to the teaching style of the person talking to them but uh in general if you assume in this example, the person teaching is very clear and teaches very well, the demon NI types usually have a harder time guessing. And when they do guess, they aren't competent in their guess. So Mm -hmm. let's just say, if I say, um, like, who do you think is going to win in the upcoming UFC fight between Daniel Cormier, shout out to San Jose and Gilroy, where I'm from. (laughs) And, uh, I'm going to make up a random fighter. Say his name's Tom Smith. 
If I ask who's going to win in that fight, Demon NI types or Savior SE types, uh, will they'll compare the stats of the fighter. They'll compare the way their bodies looked, how they did in their last fight, how much damage they took. And they'll use all the data, compare it to the other fighter and make their decision. Um, the NI Savers will do this as well, but they'll make their guess very quickly and confidently and kind of like in, in summary in their own head. And then they'll communicate it. Uh, and they'll use their sensory to back up their intuitive guess after. But the SE saviors, um, they'll guess, but they won't feel confident regardless of sharing their guess. And they'll uh, typically prefer to keep it open-ended because anything can happen in a fight. The sensory yeah. is open to them. Mm. Yeah, true. That's a very That's good true. point. Like, yeah, that is a good point. <clears throat> stressing out over guessing. Like I, I work with someone who I've noticed that same trait in that – you know, like we're kind of discussing something and I ask him, you know, what do you think? You know, what, what do you think what could happen? And he, it's almost like he's like stresses out. He's like, Oh, well, you know, like, um, uh, like he's trying to like get facts, <clears throat> but he's like, <laughs> yeah. And you'll kind of see them like state them all like, well, uh, last fight they did pretty good. They won by a decision and they fought a good fighter. Uh, and then they'll be like, this fighter has a worse record than the other fighter. Uh, so it could go this way, but who knows? Who knows? <laughs> you know, I'm like, yeah, but I, I knows. I know what's, what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, anything can happen. I'm like, yep, but it's 90% sure that this is going to happen. <laughs> yeah, and I get that. Also, like, along the vein with, like, the stress of guessing, it's also, like, just the general stress of um, the NI. So... Let me just like outline this. So one way of of seeing the functions is that they're just the way we perceive reality. So people with NI in their stack perceive the abstract as something that is controlling, right? So it's either they're doing the controlling or they're being abstractly controlled. Um, so when it's a savior, we're, we're doing the controlling. We're like, I'm going to control the abstract. When it's a demon... The reason why like someone will have so much anxiety and like fear and stress about the unfolding future is because they they don't they don't feel like they have any sense of control. So it feels as if that like abstract future is 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 controlling <clears throat> them and they don't have any influence. Yeah. Like, that's another that's another angle of stress when using NI and it's a demon. It's just that yeah, yeah loss of control. I get that. And like, I'll lead into my, what I've got. So um, off the back of that, it's um, the people that have demon and demon and I um, people that fit into that category are synonymous with like having ghost stories or freak outs and stuff like that. Oh yeah. It's because like when, when something happens or when there's an event that you can't like specifically explain the reasons or like the, the, the factual data of why it happened, like that's when they'll start going off to like, Oh my gosh, maybe it was a ghost or something, or maybe like um, there's some spirits or something. I remember I have a friend that um, she was telling me about a story. She was in a house. She'd watch a scary movie or something. And anyway, that same night she heard this noise in her bathroom. And she said like that the, uh, the shampoo bottle like fell over and she's like, Oh my gosh, I was so scared. Like I'm, I'm actually like freaking out that maybe there's actually a ghost in my house and stuff. And I'm just like, um, <clears throat> maybe the bottle just fell over because like, just because the wind was really strong that night, right? Inside the house. Yeah. No. Maybe ghost man, ghost maybe surreal. Was, yeah, <laughs> oh, maybe surreal, like man. the, the, like the liquid ghost in, in me right now. His name is Rock Hakodesh. Yeah, what are you, you talking game, about? Dude? What the fuck? What are you talking about? I have no yeah, idea. Man, I got the Holy spirit in me, the Holy ghost. Oh, they're okay. real, man. Yeah. Okay. Right. Everything starts right. in the spirit realm. Yeah, but he's not—he's not, he's not earth, flying man. around your house like moving furniture around, man. Oh yeah, he's no, staying comfortably in me because he loves me. <clears throat> yeah, but he's, oh, he's not an like... IJ too, huh? What'd you say? He's an IJ too, huh? Did you say about my <laughs> my Holy Spirit inside me. Don't offend him. Uh, he's gonna talk to you about that later. Yeah, oh, right. <laughs> let's, take, let's take this offline. Yeah. Um, yeah, so what I was saying, yeah, ghost stories, you know, you see yeah. on YouTube people freaking out about the, the unknown. It's like people that have demon and I, it's like there's this unknown thing that's out there that's like controlling us or doing stuff in the, in the, the intuitive world that's not visible to the sensory eyes. You know what I mean? 
Um, another one, another example of Demon and I is. Um, I just thought of some. I just realized something, Jono. So like, me. what you just said, I'm thinking. Oh, the Savior and I's are kind of into the same thing, but in a Savior state. So the Savior and yes. I's are like into law of attraction. So the positive, weird, unknown stuff. And then the demon and eyes are into the negative, weird, unknown yeah. stuff. I don't know. <clears throat> that's, that's interesting. Interesting concept. It's like, Maybe yeah, we should unpack Savior's, this more. Let's unpack yeah. this more in another episode or something. Yeah. It's a good. It's one. interesting. But yeah, yeah, carry on. Yeah. So, um, yeah, basically what Leon's covered this already, but like, you know, synonymous with like Illuminati or like secret organizations or, you know, cults kind of thing going on. Like it's, it's, we, we kind of say a little bit in um, objective personality in the community there, there's people that, you know, actually uh, legitimately um, <clears throat> concerned that objective personality is a cult um, and that there is some weird uh, abstract control going on. That's going to um, fuck us up or something like that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's that's all. Yeah. yeah that's it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I do agree with um what you're saying. I mean, the, the, yeah. So Shabe also said they see the same pattern of mm -hmm. the um the demon the demon NIs in yeah. particular because they have NI. Yeah. And unfortunately they, they're not like they don't seem to be able to grasp their typing well either. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cause they're <clears throat> like, what about this? What about this? What about this? It's like, well, everyone can do everything. You're talking about tendencies, not actions. Yeah. 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 Moving and it's on. like yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah, let's not dive into that. Um so yeah, we've um <laughs> We've covered what it's like, what it looks like for someone to have savior and demon and I. So now we're going to look at pros and cons of, of um, people with, with savior and I. So um, yeah, Leon, you can start us off as usual. Okay. Uh, well, having savior and I helps a lot when making plans. Uh, things go a lot better in, you know, when things are planned out. I don't think it matters what type you are. If you don't have a plan, they say uh, you're planning to fail. So... I totally believe that uh, having your directions very useful to, you know, when you're trying to get things done or achieve something, whether it's a small or large goal, uh, should I go into cons as well or not yet? Yeah, I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with pros first. And yeah, yeah. so everything you've said, like, I think that's echoed as like what, especially what people kind of recognize yeah. is good for, even in MBTI, like stereotypically that was yeah. it. Um, another thing, which is like, I think it's less, less um uh shown or like put put on on notice is that and i feels like a natural feel for like systematic thinking so it's like when there's a problem you have a feel for how deep that problem goes it's like you're not gonna over stress about something because you know it's not actually that much of a problem and you're not gonna under under um or underreact to something that's actually a very deep problem. Mm -hmm. um, so it, having that feel means that you can navigate yeah. issues yeah. quite well. Um, so uh, that that is. I, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I, want, I wanted to blast. Uh, I was going to say. Uh, <laughs> I, I realized who's going to win the blasting contest. <laughs> no, no, like I'll, one, I'll, I'll let you have the floor. Oh uh, yeah, right, like, like, like like you're letting me. Okay. But anyways. <laughs> 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 Like, <laughs> so I was just going to say that um, uh, it feels like a lot of the issues I think are issues. A lot of others that are sensors don't think they're issues. But then later on, they're like, oh, my God, how to get here? Like after yeah. it happens and then they're like, oh, I'm just going to like do something else. But it's like, but I, I saw that happening way before yeah. it actually happened. Yeah, it yeah, yeah. was an issue. The little thing you're doing exactly. adds up to the big thing and just stop doing the little thing or change it slightly or whatever. Yes. Yeah. That's one thing. Agree. Also, yeah. I, uh, I was going to say of a come to a realization that NI and SI both link to goals. But um, one thing about NI is you have to have NI in order to make the goal or not have NI, but you use NI to make the goal because you have to see in the future. You have to have that creativity, that vision mm, and focus on that one thing. True. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Your turn. 
Yeah, go on, Assis. I'm going to let you. Let us have it. <laughs> um, <laughs> shit, I, I think I forgot. Hold up. All right, moving that, on. That double feminine I'll, blast. You have a think. Well, I'll, 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 do my, I'll do the pros. <clears throat> yeah, go on, John. So you guys have covered it, but like basically I just wrote down that you guys are good at predicting the future, and then in brackets I wrote sometimes because <laughs> it depends how yeah. good your consume is, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So sometimes <laughs> you could be way off. You could be way <laughs> off. Focused. Yeah, but true, true. If you're growth minded and you're open minded, then you know you 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 generally be on the right track. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and great at planning. Ugh, great at creating plans. So my girlfriend has masculine si. Uh, uh, <laughs> masculine ni. Um, and she is always creating plans. Like she's always like planning, you know, when we're going to like move house and when we're going to like, what, what we're going to make the house look like. Um, we're actually about to move out. So she's like organizing like all their furniture to get sold and to get moved out. And then she's like, Oh, what do you want to do in our house? You know, how, how do you want it to look? She's already like, she's visualizing like yeah. how it's going to look and like visual. It's like visually planning. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's true. And then like, we we react to like just this is more like of a biology thing, but we um our brain doesn't really know the difference between imagination and reality. So when you make these vivid Ooh. visual plans, it, it it makes it more of a real experience. Um, Imagine you had double masculine you know. sleep and not knowing if reality or <clears throat> imagination. Yeah, was- man. Exactly. Yeah. That that yeah. That's a whole other video we can go into. Yeah. Um, All right, but yeah, I agree with what you're saying. Um, let's get these cons oh, going. Unless I say yeah. what he was going to say. Yeah, I did. I did. Um, Odom, because you were, you were talking about um, uh, sort of having a sense of how deep a problem is. Yeah. Um, I, I've noticed in, in myself, especially because I don't have a lot of experience, and I noticed that I tend to not rely on my experience as much as I should, you know, what little I have of it to build on it um, uh, consciously, I guess. It's, it's like I have to sort of uh, fail at it a few times before I'm like, oh, wait, I've seen this before or, um, oh, wait, this is like that. Whereas it's you guys are faster at um, – sort of recognizing what you've already learned. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're trying to, like, you're going to fail at it multiple times because you're always geared towards what new thing will I experience this time? Yeah. But, um, yeah, eventually you're like, oh, there's nothing new here. But, yeah, it's because you want something new. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Yeah, so let's not not praise NI too much. We've uh, we've highlighted a few things that are pretty good about it, but now... (laughs) That's, That's tear it to shreds. Rip into yeah. NI. <laughs> so yeah, Leon, you can go first, man. All right. Well, with NI, too many details are missed when it's a savior. Like, um, it's a lot harder to be able to get many details and remember them. And information gets murky like water. You can't see things clearly in reality. It feels like the things that are supposed to be easy are actually really difficult for you because we live in a sensor world. Yeah. And you, know, you just struggle so much with simple tasks or tasks that are supposed to be simple. And you watch everybody else that are lead sensors and you're like, wow, I wish I can like clean the dishes that fast without breaking something or like, uh, <laughs> you know, just something dumb, you know? Yeah, man. Just it, it generally just being inept at handling reality. Like, yeah. and especially because I think if you have an eye and save your eye, you're using SC to navigate um the sensory so it's it's not organized sensory it's yeah you only know how to adapt moment to moment like even yeah. people with savior see they're just adapting all the time it's so like you're aware you that agree. you're supposed to organize that sensory but you're even worse at it than any exactly exactly so it's like so being completely hopeless in situations is like a common theme if you have an eye and it's like yeah. you just have to uh, just roll you have to roll with it it's yeah, yeah. so it's it, as much as we praise that you you do just seem like a retard most of the time <laughs> so um but yeah yeah that's me and leon kicking ourselves 
Um, I'm sure Jono and Assis have more. Like, you guys are NE, so you see our bullshit. Like, yeah, we do. So, we do. So, I'm sure you guys have a lot to say about this. Okay. So, I would like to formally apologize to you, Odin, on, uh, on, this, on this public forum uh, for giving you so much shit in the fucking in in our in our group chats because because i like like what you say to me because we have the same deciders and it's masculine ti as well so yeah. i know that we're both playing like pretty much the same game just with like like different rules or different information yeah, yeah. so it's like i like when leon says something i'm just like because it, it's very te as well it's very yes or no yeah um uh, but like when we uh when you and i are discussing we're like all right this this and we're like basically like like pressing our ti together to see yeah. what happens yeah. and i feel i feel i feel so bad honestly sometimes <laughs> because it's like we're both going at each other like like so deeply to like work <laughs> on something but like i feel but it's, no know, no like, it's fine i'm on the same <laughs> usually i'm like I'm not- <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> because sometimes I'm like, I need. Uh, it's it's nice to have that like. Um, it's like critiquing on the same level. It's like mm-hmm. it's like necessary critiquing. Yeah, but I don't know. I can't explain it, but it feels fine. It feels like it's okay. It's fair game, so okay. it's fine. And right. usually, as well, if I'm talking to someone with okay, any, with the gay. it's good because like, I feel like you're gonna see more than me. So I mean, it, I I get more out of it anyway. So. Yeah. If anything, I'm sorry for wasting your time most of the time. <laughs> so, okay, that's what so, I was looking for, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Dude. That was cool. Yeah. So <clears throat> you wanted um you wanted our well, actually a seat, did you finish? Uh on the cons yeah. of it of an eye? Oh, right. Um <laughs> thanks for thanks for realigning me. Um <laughs> so 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 that's one con where it's like you know, it just feels like I spend most of my time uh, interacting with NI, just trying to, you know, uh, m- you know, make it open. Maybe them. Yeah, yeah, kind of. It's like, okay, did you consider this? Yeah, it's yeah. It's like, yeah. no, I didn't. I don't need to. It's like, okay, what about this? No, that's dumb. Okay, what about this? No, I'll do that later. It's like, okay. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, I'm really glad I have Save It Consume because I'm really, I'm always hyper aware that. I, I can't see everything I should. Like, every time I have a thought, like, I'm just like, I know I'm missing something. Like, something in the environment will will indicate that, and I'm open for that information. So that's mm-hmm. where my consume comes in, because I'm always like, yeah, like, I'm probably not seeing that. Let me add that in. Like, yeah. Cool. So when you consume, you're probably always relating, right? To, like, like you're always NIing over... Yeah, yeah, it's about like refining whatever original idea I had. Yeah, so it's always related to the sleep. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. So, <clears throat> my perspective is sometimes NIs can be too focused in the future and not in the reality, not in the SE, not in the moment. Always out here, light years away from, you know, just constantly planning and organizing and trying to figure stuff out that they potentially may miss what's happening around them. Um, And of course, you know, if they are too fixated in the future and on their NI and they're not balanced enough with their SE, they're not doing enough consume, they're not looking at the SE, the data, they can be very off, wrong direction, going the wrong way and then crash down. One thing I wanted to say as well, which is not fully related to NI, it's more just intuitive versus sensory, since we're kind of on that topic anyway, is that um, I had a thought, and this is more maybe for the the listeners to see what they think, but I was thinking that a a, a sensory dominance, because we like, would you guys agree that we live in a, like a sensory dominated world? Like, yeah, like we live in systems, we live in SA. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, Minimalistically, yeah. yeah. So therefore, like sensory dominance te- technically have an upper hand in society. They're kind of just able to live in their saviors and basically be productive and live a life according to what their back. strengths are, right? Yeah, they're better. But intuitives, 
uh, like other end of the spectrum, right? We, we have sensory loss. So for us, it's like life is a struggle <laughs> in a sense, almost <laughs> like a struggle. But in like, uh-huh, what I'm tra- it. <laughs> it is a struggle. In Fuck. a sense, S for struggle, demon struggle. Savior struggle. Sure. What oh I'm trying to God. say basically is what I'm trying to say is um, our sense because sensors are like living in their saviors all day. Are they le- are they more disconnected from the intuitive side of things versus right, intuitives yeah. who live yeah. in the sensory who are basically forced to work on the sensory? That's true. Uh, do you think there's more of a like a, a balance yeah. with intuitives? Like I, more forced I, to work. Right. It's it's the same with um. It's the same. What you're saying is the same as when uh, I think Shave said, the play blast people, they they're more disconnected to their internal world because they don't they don't have to deal with it if they can like play blast through life, but yes. like the introverted people have to interact with extroverts because you can't live without right. learning to do it. So it's same same as that. Like yeah. you're right. So basically, and I same as that. Yes, exactly. So if you're if you're a sleep savior and you're in, intuitive, then you fuck. You're basically. a gangster. Yeah, I see. I see. Has something to say. I think. Yeah, that's all I, of us, by I, the way. I I disagree with the with the with the premise, but I agree with the conclusion. I don't think that sensors have a upper end in life. I I think that they have the appearance of an upper hand. Because it's like if sensory is what is literal and what is easy to come by, let's say through uh, social media or um, what we are really sensitive to our demons is the, is the literal, then of course it would seem that way, you know, especially with, with, um, with sensors, uh, particularly SFs dominating uh, uh, social media, but you can't, you you know it's like it is and then with with what with you said odom um that you were you were ta- you were making that connection uh it's it's more so that um you know because everything is has has a binary uh, or everything is a binary yeah uh everything it, you you could basically separate everything into just different levels of yin and yang and where it's if if you're more on the yang side, it's easier to not have to do the yin, but you can't get ahead if you don't do the yin. Yeah, that's true. It's mm. it's just like it's just like the nearest point of contact or like the path of lesser resistance. Like you can you can get in that way, but you're not gonna be able to get out without. I really like doing, to understand a know. sensory dominance perspective on this. Yeah, yeah let's, let's get someone on. Yeah, and we'll do that too. <laughs> I wanted to say, well, what if everything was taken away? Like no internet, you were in the forest, you had like no clothes, you know, naked and afraid style. Would an intuitive be better suited for that or just as suited as a sensor? Because like we might be able to see what's possible and what's going to happen, but are we able to do something about it? No, you- no, I would, I, would die, I would die off. I would die. Well, off. Really? I would probably survive a little bit. I'd love to live like that. Well, I mean, that's that's why we have sensors, cold, right? Man. They take they take care of us. They take care of us. There, we are their long term investment. Because we <laughs> <be a homestead, laughs> <right? laughs> be like, yeah, otherwise sure. they're stuck there that's forever. The to be I mean, we're the ones that yeah. figure the way out. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> we're the ones that are like, oh, look at this silica gel. Let's yeah. eat it and see what happens. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. and then we die. And they're like, oh shit. Or they're like writing notes like, do not eat that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then the next intuitive is like, wait, what if they do not eat that because it's because they're saving it because it's too good. I want to see what happens. <laughs> right. Up and they, and they die. <laughs> or somebody's color blind, and then they eat it, and then they then they die because they didn't realize that it was that color, not the other color. <laughs> <laughs> all right oh, that was great what a great ending oh, man, that was great. right so yeah we we've gone through so many different aspects of and i what it is savior demon pros cons and uh, what it looks like when someone has it as a savior and or a demon um yeah and we'd be like john said we'd be looking forward to get um any perspective from sensory dominance or sensory saviors um from that you know from that side of things because we're just intuitives but anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this episode uh make sure to like comment and subscribe turn on the notifications check out our facebook page and instagram 
And uh, if you're interested in our merchandise on Instagram, DM us for purchases, specifically Leon as well. Um, and uh, yeah, see you in the land of chaos Ooh. next time. Uh, Boom. Boom. Is it like this? Hey. this is- and let's let's, uh, de- let's they... demon censor on our viewers real quick. Um, <laughs> do the Naruto <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah. Katun, go out again, Naruto. See you later, guys. See you guys. Bye. Bye.